What if I told you that right now, in a Pentagon conference room, two military branches are locked in the most expensive argument in aviation history? We're talking about a $20 billion disagreement that could determine who controls the skies for the next 50 years. The Air Force just awarded Boeing a contract for the F-47, America's most advanced fighter jet ever conceived. But the Navy is furious claiming their FAXX program got stabbed in the back with an 84% budget cut. It's like watching two siblings fight over the family inheritance, except the inheritance is air superiority and the stakes are global security. This isn't just about money or military politics. This is about a fundamental question that's tearing apart the Pentagon. In an era where China is building six-generation fighters and hypersonic missiles, can America afford to build two different super jets? Or do we bet everything on one? But here's what the defense contractors don't want you to know. This battle reveals a terrifying truth about the future of American air power. The tale of two philosophies. Let me tell you the story of how we got here because it perfectly captures the schizophrenia of modern military planning. Picture this. It's 2018, and Pentagon strategists are staring at intelligence photos of China's new J-36 fighter. This isn't just another aircraft. It's a sixth-generation monster that makes our F-35s look like World War II Mustangs. The Air Force response was pure American swagger. We'll build the F-47, the most advanced air superiority fighter ever conceived. Give us $20 billion, and we'll dominate every sky on Earth. Think of it like building the ultimate Formula One race car. No compromises, maximum performance, designed to win at any cost. But the Navy looked at the same threat and said, wait a minute, we need something different. Our jets have to land on aircraft carriers in 30-foot seas, operate in salt spray, and launch from catapults that would tear apart a land-based fighter. So they proposed the FAXX, a carrier-capable beast that could match the F-47's performance while surviving the brutal reality of naval aviation. It was like asking two master chefs to create the perfect meal, but one has to cook in a five-star kitchen while the other has to work in a food truck during an earthquake. Both solutions were brilliant, but they were solving completely different problems. And that's when the Pentagon accountants dropped the hammer that changed everything. The Budget Bloodbath Here's where our story takes a brutal turn that reads like a corporate thriller. The Pentagon looked at both programs and delivered a verdict that sent shockwaves through the defense industry. We can't afford both. Pick one. The numbers are staggering. The F-47 program is projected to cost over $20 billion just for development, with each aircraft carrying a price tag of roughly $300 million. The FAXX, the Navy requested $1.4 billion and got $74 million, an 84% cut that essentially killed the program. But here's what makes this decision so controversial. Boeing, the company that just won the F-47 contract, publicly stated they could handle both programs simultaneously. We have the engineering capacity, the manufacturing capability, and the workforce to build both jets, they declared. It's like a master craftsman saying he can build two different masterpieces at the same time, but the customer only wants to pay for one. The real question isn't about Boeing's capabilities, it's about Pentagon priorities. The Air Force has been playing political chess for decades, building relationships, securing allies in Congress, and positioning themselves as the primary guardians of American air power. The Navy? They've been focused on building ships and submarines, assuming their aviation needs would be taken care of. The Technical Divide Now, let's talk about what makes these aircraft so fundamentally different. Because the engineering challenges reveal why this isn't just a budget fight, it's a physics problem. The F-47 is designed like a land-based apex predator. It needs maximum speed, maximum stealth, and maximum range to dominate air-to-air -air combat over vast continental distances. We're talking about an aircraft that can supercruise at over Mach 2, control up to 1,000 collaborative combat aircraft simultaneously, and carry hypersonic missiles that can strike targets 1,500 miles away. It's like building a chess grandmaster that can play a thousand games at once and win them all. But the FAXX faces challenges that would make an F-47 engineer's head spin. Carrier operations mean the aircraft has to withstand catapult launches that generate forces equivalent to a car crash, then land on a moving deck in conditions that would ground any land-based fighter. The salt air corrodes everything, the space constraints limit weapon storage, and the weight restrictions mean every component has to be engineered to perfection. It's the difference between building a Formula One car that also has to be a submarine. Both are incredible engineering achievements, but they require completely different approaches to the same basic problem. How do you dominate the air? And here's where the story gets really interesting, because China isn't facing this dilemma at all. The China Factor 
While America argues about budgets and priorities, China is playing a completely different game. Their J-36 program doesn't have to worry about carrier operations because they're building their air force around land-based operations and artificial islands in the South China Sea. It's like they're playing chess while we're trying to play chess and checkers simultaneously. But here's what should terrify every Pentagon planner. China's defense spending isn't constrained by congressional budget battles or inter-service rivalry. When they decide to build a sixth-generation fighter, they build it. When they need carrier-capable aircraft, they design them from scratch, without worrying about cost overruns or political compromises. The timeline comparison is brutal. China's J-36 program has been in development for roughly the same time as our sixth-generation efforts, but they're not splitting their resources between two different aircraft. They're putting everything into one unified vision of air superiority. And here's the part that keeps Air Force generals awake at night. While we're debating whether to build the F-47 or the FAXX, China is already testing aircraft that might make both of them obsolete. Intelligence reports suggest they're working on unmanned sixth-generation fighters that could operate without human pilots, removing the weight and space constraints that limit manned aircraft performance. Which brings us to the ultimate question. Is America making the right choice, or are we about to repeat the same mistakes that led to Pearl Harbor? The Strategic Gamble there's where our story reaches its climax, and it involves a bet that could determine the future of American military dominance. The Pentagon's decision to prioritize the F-47 over the FAXX represents a fundamental strategic choice. They're betting that land-based air power will be more important than carrier-based aviation in future conflicts. Think about what that means. For 80 years, American aircraft carriers have been the ultimate symbol of global power projection. They've allowed us to park an airfield anywhere in the world's oceans and project force wherever we needed it. But the F-47 decision suggests that era might be ending. The logic is actually sound, if terrifying. Modern anti-ship missiles can sink aircraft carriers from thousands of miles away. Hypersonic weapons can strike carrier battle groups faster than they can defend themselves. In a world where carriers are becoming sitting ducks, maybe the future belongs to aircraft that can operate from dispersed land bases and don't need vulnerable floating airports. But here's the counter-argument that Navy planners are making. Land bases can be destroyed by ballistic missiles, but aircraft carriers can move. A carrier battle group can reposition itself anywhere in the world's oceans, making it much harder for enemies to target. It's the difference between a fixed fortress and a mobile castle. The truth is, both arguments have merit, which makes the Pentagon's choice even more agonizing. They're essentially betting $20 billion on a strategic vision that might be completely wrong. But here's where our story takes an unexpected twist that could change everything. Congress isn't happy with the Pentagon's decision, and they're fighting back with the one weapon that always gets military attention, money. The House of Representatives has allocated nearly $1 billion for the FAXX program, directly contradicting the Pentagon's budget priorities. It's like watching Congress tell the military, we don't care what you think you need, we're gonna fund what we think you should have. This sets up a fascinating, constitutional crisis. Can Congress force the military to develop weapon systems that the Pentagon doesn't want? Can they override strategic decisions made by the people who actually understand the threats we're facing? Or are they responding to political pressure from defense contractors and Navy lobbyists who want to keep their programs alive? The answer to these questions will determine not just the future of American aviation, but the balance of power between civilian oversight and military expertise. Conclusion Standing here in 2024, watching this $20 billion battle unfold, I'm reminded that the most important military decisions are often the ones that happen in conference rooms, not on battlefields. The choice between the F-47 and FAXX isn't just about aircraft specifications or budget numbers. It's about America's vision of how future wars will be fought. But this generational battle between old and new, between proven concepts and revolutionary ideas, isn't limited to fighter jets. The same philosophical divide is playing out across every branch of the military, from submarines to satellites to the weapon systems we haven't even imagined yet. Speaking of weapon systems we haven't imagined yet, there's something happening in the skies right now that makes both the F-47 and FAXX look like expensive relics from a bygone era. While America argues about $20 billion manned fighters, autonomous drone swarms are quietly revolutionizing warfare in ways that render traditional air superiority obsolete. If you want to understand how unmanned systems are making every manned aircraft, from fighters to bombers to helicopters, potentially irrelevant, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification 
notification bell. Next week, I'm revealing how next-generation drone warfare is seizing control of the skies. And trust me, what's happening with autonomous swarms will completely rewrite everything you think you know about air combat. Which fighter program do you think America should prioritize? The proven air superiority of the F-47 or the carrier flexibility of the FAXX? Let me know in the comments below, because this decision might determine who controls the skies for the next 50 years.